Now there's always refinement at the end, right? I don't like to stare too long at fading because what happens is you start to program your eyes to see lines that aren't really there. It's just, you know, if I hold my fingers together, together like this closely, they're actually not connected, but your brain sometimes will process the connection. So I'll move on and then I'll do refinement later. So what I'm prepping Tony for now is the clipper over comb. How many of you, how many of you struggle with the clipper over comb? Clipper over comb. Crowd ridge, crowd ridge, yes, yes. I always get the same look. Anytime someone raises their hand about clipper over comb, struggles, it's always like this. Right? Don't, don't be scared. Uh, remember, the answers to cutting his head is on his head, right? Remember I told you guys about the protruding bone, his entire hair. By the way, look, look at how this is starting to create dimension now. You guys like this so far? Mm -hmm. Not the same guy. Not the same guy. By the time we're done with this, it's, it, there's going to be so much dimension to his head, and it's going to have actual style. Now look, when I do clipper over comb, it's up to you guys how you guys want to hold your comb. For me, I prefer not to go horizontal. Some people love to go horizontal. I like to go diagonal back. I like to go diagonal back. I like to cover more ground connecting above the parietal ridge to the side of what I've already cut below it. Does that make sense? I cut a two below the parietal ridge. Now I'm cutting at the parietal ridge, and I want to marry those two, but always based on the protruding bone. So the reason why I really like this very thick spine here at the bottom is as I go in with my diagonal back, look at where the, where the spine raise, uh, lays up against. It's laying right up against what? protruding bone. And it's telling me exactly what can come off in order to be safe and not cut too far over that parietal ridge. You guys follow me? Yeah? So look, the way you know if it's a diagonal back is if I took a marble and I placed it at the top, where would it roll? It would roll back. So if I tilted it this way, this would be a diagonal mm -hmm. forward, right? So we're going to go diagonal back. I'm also, for beginners, I really recommend that you throw a number one guard on there as opposed to having no guard in there. How many of you have done clipper over comb? One, one, one. The clipper goes right through the comb and then you put a, a nice little diagonal line on the side of their head. Yeah. But if you throw a number one guard on there, amen, right? Did I hear an amen back there? I think amen. <laughs> okay. You throw, you throw a number one guard on there and look, even if it does go into the comb, I'm still safe. And it provides a nice little platform. So now I look at this. This is how we're stand up for me, Tony. It's also important <clears throat> with this technique to identify the spine. You never want to have clipper, uh, clipper teeth outside of the spine. If the teeth get over just into the teeth okay. of the clipper okay. comb, it's going to go through. That's why the length of a clipper comb is about the width of a blade on purpose. Always make sure that a portion of the blade is on the spine. That's going to help prevent the blade from going through the cup of teeth. Yeah. So, so here at the corner, uh, 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 what is your name? Jessica. Jessica. So, Jessica, I'll talk to you real quick. I'll say, Jessica, so how are you doing? Do you like the classes so far? Is everything going pretty good? Well, not, not like a lot. Okay. Cutting hair blind. Yeah. So, why am I able to do this, guys? Because I'm a master? I'm a master ninja. I'm a ninja turtle. What if, <laughs> why am I able to do this? Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Follow me and Dave. He's the better looking one, but I'm a ninja. Why am I able to do this? Because his head is giving me all the guidance I need to cut safely around that, that parietal ridge, which we all fear tremendously. And I'm telling you today, stop fearing the parietal ridge. Let the parietal, let the protruding bone guide you on how to cut around that. Does that make sense, you guys? Is that helpful? Okay, so when I go around diagonal back, I'm going to over direct. That means I'm going to come past center in the back. Then I'm going to start diagonal back this way, the other way, right? I can't maintain this all the way this way because then I end up diagonal forward. Yeah? This is okay. Horizontal is cool. If you guys like that, that's great. Every time I do it, I raise lines. I keep raising, raising, raising. But I go diagonal back. It's pretty simple. Make sense? Any questions? Good, Good stuff. Are you guys learning some stuff? Yeah. Good. Helpful? Yeah. A lot better than the clap. Yeah. <laughs> So nice. Now with Evan, what I'm going to do is, is we give him a number two fade on the side. I use clipper over comb technique, similar to what Tony's doing now, to connect the side through the parietal ridge. Now all we have to do is trim the top, apply a little product, style, style Evan up, and kick him out of the chair. What so, product do you use? Question? What product do you use? I use a lot of products. Today the product that we're going to use is <laughs> black. It is a, it's an urban paste, so it's like a matte paste. It's real popular in the new comb over and fall out styles because it doesn't get hard like a gel. Mm -hmm. About five years ago, all anybody wanted was just gel. But the problem with gel is you touch the head and it feels like, yeah. like a helmet. 
<laughs> now with the new paste and with the um, water-based pomades, the guys that are wearing the gentleman cuts prefer those type of products. So now with Evan, I'm going to use clipper over finger. Now I've, I've damp, dampened Evan's hair. Uh, I've come through it to check the length. With this style haircut, you generally want to leave the front bangs, the front area, a little longer. So what am I going to do uh, to cut this haircut is I'm going to make my initial cut using Evan's bangs, taking off only about a quarter of an inch, then I'm going to graduate it. And as it gets towards the back of Evan's haircut, it's going to get a little shorter, a little shorter, a little shorter. That way it connects to the back. So instead of using shears, I'm going to comb through Evan's hair, use my cordless clippers, and cut right through. You see how fast I did that? And guess what I just didn't do? I didn't cut my hand. I cut my hands all the time. Mm. And I was able to actually cut more hair. Uh, what size shears do you use? What's your name? Perla. You don't use shears? Who does hair in the front? Perla. Perla, what size, what size shears do you use? Four inch. Huh? Five and a half, fives? Those small ones? I see Cosmos Hollis just <laughs> it's like five cuts to get across the finger link. I'm watching Tony do the same thing. When you're using clipper over finger, you don't need five cuts. Whoa. And you it's don't off. cut your finger. <clears throat> and you don't cut and your you're finger. never going to cut your finger. I use shears. Don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking shears. I have about four pair over here. But my goal today is to give you confidence in using clippers. And some of the techniques that we're showing hopefully can do that. Holding it properly, using some of these techniques that, that Tony and I are sharing. So after creating um, the initial cut uh, on Evan's bangs, I'm gonna cut left to right. I'm gonna do this, because this is gonna help me create my graduation. My first cut, I'm gonna pull up, I identify um, Evan's bangs. I'm gonna create my graduation with my fingers. Simple, cut and it's done. Now while I work through Evan's hair, trimming the top, Tony, talk to us, where are you at? Yeah, yeah, so for you uh, guys that use uh, scissors, how many do you use scissors? Yeah, sure, you guys like them? You guys like them? I like to feel the head, I don't know. I, I, I like to feel where the head is, yeah. Uh, I love this technique. Uh, I've been practicing a whole lot with it. It's just new to me. Uh, I, I love to get a feel for uh, where their dips and valleys are on their head. Now, uh, how many of you have asked a gentleman how much do you want off the top and they say what? Just a trim. Sure. Just a little bit. So, so what does that mean? Remember we just talked about communication is key, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I got a short story. How many of you guys know what hard parts are? Yeah, hard parts? Yeah, hard parts. So I taught a class with uh, Daniel Moses in, in Oakland, and we did a comb over with a hard part. It's a line, right, on the side of the head that accents the line. It dates, it dates back to the 40s, right, 1940s. It's pretty, it's not, it's, it seems to be kind of new now, but it's, it's been around for a while. Anyway, so I taught this whole class on a comb over cut, and then, I, and then I showed them the proper place to place a hard part uh, so that it, it creates balance, not just drilling in a line anywhere, yeah? Okay, so the whole class was about comb over and hard part, right? And so the class broke, they brought out their models, everyone's working on a model, and the lady comes up to me, she goes, Tony, do you think you can help me out with the hard part? And I said, no problem. So I come over there, I get my trimmer out, and I'm looking at them, I'm measuring out where the hard part would go. I'm not going to put it like No, no hard part for you. Uh, but I measure out where the hard part would go, and then I just go ahead and put it on the line. And the guy looked in the mirror and he goes, what is that? <laughs> and I looked, at, I looked at the Cosmo and she goes, and I said, you asked me to help you with the hard part. She goes, yeah, but I meant the hard part, like around the ear. <laughs> the hard getting around the ear is hard for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So communication is key. When, when someone... <laughs> and they're looking at it and they go, a little bit more, or a little bit less. Now your little bit matches his little bit. Does that make sense? So, so do that every single Don't No guessing on this. No guessing. All the answers are on the head. He has all the answers to how much he wants to take off the top. Make sense? So I take my first measurement to the fringe, right? For those of you in school, we don't call it bangs, but it's okay to call it bangs or fringe. I got in trouble for calling it bangs. Anyway, so whatever it is, fringe, bangs, whatever you want to call it. So I get that measurement. Now I already did clip over comb. You guys saw me do that on this side. So now I'm just going to marry a little bit of the fringe with a little bit of the clip rubber comb. And then I'm going to come on this side, marry a little bit of the fringe with a little bit of the clip rubber comb from this side. And now I've got my guide. And now I'm going to work in this direction. Now, here's the other mistake. How many of you have done a really nice haircut, but then you go to style the fringe or the bangs and they got this little bit to try and comb over? 
and it's not working. The cut is too short, right? This is why I always recommend for students, start with the front, work your way back, and always at an angle where, that feature in your head sideways works. Always at an angle this way, yeah? Give more, more room here, because as the forehead comes down, sometimes they want to cover that. And when you cut all this the same length toward the front, sometimes you'll end up with a one inch front that can't comb over anymore. It just spikes up now. The rest of it will comb over. So always work in this manner. Yeah. All right. Cool. Any questions on that? One last tidbit, guys. Uh, how many of you guys like your like your thinning shears? Thinning shears? I love my thinning shears. Can you turn sideways? There's this new product out. Uh, and it's, it's sold, Daniel Moses has it at, at the table there. How many of you like to do thinning shears? Yeah? It's pretty cool. Man, I love it. I don't know. If you don't like it, really discover it. There's this cool comb out there that has a wedge on it. You guys see that wedge? Mm -hmm. And your thinning shear rests right inside that wedge. So as you push up, it actually allows you to go ahead and do your thinning shears and it guides your, your, your thinning shears upwards. Isn't that cool? Yeah? How, how many of you think this is a cool idea? Yeah? Cool. All right, so give me another name on your phone there. Uh, the second person that followed you. Uh, Dave. It's called the Pro Edge. Sells it over, I think it's like uh, 12 bucks or something like that, over at Daniel Moses' booth, the League of Extraordinary Stylists. And they have all these different, uh, different colors. The second one I followed you today. <laughs>